Hi everybody, you've got Luke Rowan here from the EdApp sales team. I'm um, joined by Chris Lemon, who's in our New York office. Have we got you there, Chris? Hey Luke, how are we doing today? Very well, very well. Um, we've just come up on the hour and um, as per normal, we always like to wait a few minutes to allow some extra people to file in. So maybe we could just kill some time uh, just to get the last few attendees in. How are things over your way, Chris? Uh, a little chilly, but but great otherwise. <laughs> I think we're getting our first snow tomorrow. Wow. Wow, yeah. I don't envy New York at all. Uh, <laughs> so this, this webinar is obviously our uh, America's and UK installment. Uh, so there's a lot of people making their way into winter right now. Uh, I'm actually located on the west coast of the US down in uh, Los Angeles. So um, luckily it's not too cold here just yet. Um, so today's webinar topic is all about getting to know our content library. Um, many of you that have joined us before would know that the library was launched just this year. Uh, it does contain a fantastic mix of different content and um, since its launch has been growing all the time. Uh, so in the past, we've really discussed that it, uh, that it really has been a, a feature in the making and um, the fact that it is uh, fueled by many partners uh, that do deliver courseware into it. Um, so today we're really hoping to share, showcase uh, some new material and, um, and really where it's going in the near future. <clears throat> um, it looks like we're a few minutes in, so let's get started. Oh, sorry. Um, before we actually jump into the topic, we wanted to just quickly mention that um, over the last couple of weeks, we've actually launched quite a few really amazing case studies on our website. Uh, and as you can see on screen here, we, um, we have a, a great deal of different industries covered, uh, whether you're uh, in health and safety teams and you're kind of working out in the field, whether you've got uh, sales units, uh, whether you're looking at retail operations, uh, and then Shell there on the very end is actually a marketing excellence program. Uh, so we have many, many great case studies uh, and lots of video testimonials. Uh, and I know that when I have looked at SaaS solutions in the past, it's always good to hear from individuals and, and hear stories about how a, a platform can be used. And especially, you know, we, we encounter all the time that... Um, organizations are, are new to micro learning. They're looking to, to see whether it fits within their current suite of tools. Uh, and as such, uh, hearing from organizations like BP Charge Master in the UK, uh, I'm sure you guys will take out <clears throat> a lot of really great learnings from case studies like that one. Chris, if you could do me a favor and just post the link to our Toolbox Talks case studies page. Uh, in the chat and um, for anyone that's interested, just click that link and it'll take you straight through to those case studies. Yep, sure um, I'll also mention as well that um, the chat, we're hopeful, hopeful that you guys will use the chat today to give us feedback as we walk through. Uh, our webinar today, the structure of it is, is very much focused on a kind of a highlight reel of what we've had a look at in the past in the library and then what's to come. Uh, and then we're going to do a bit of a demo at the end to show you actually how to use the library. Uh, but we would love to hear from you on what sort of content you need uh, for your programs, um, because that will be something that we can certainly uh, speak about actioning and, and get you real feedback on, on whether that library is coming soon or whether it can be woven into our future plans. But to keep things off on the library front, um, for anyone that's new to the platform, here's a few, few quick points to describe why EdApp's library is different from others and why is it so powerful? Uh, so firstly, it's free. The, the cost of the material in the library uh, is nothing. It's rolled into the, to the license cost of the platform itself. Uh, so you're just plan, paying for the, the SaaS cost uh, and then any content that you use is, is completely free. Um, it's brandable and it's editable. So that means that you can take courseware out of our library 
put your logo on it and reshape it for your audience. Um, and we hear that from customers that that is really a great leg up in, in terms of uh, providing more meaningful content because you can shape that material using your industry terminology. You can also remove redundant uh, content if need be, whether that's a slide out of a lesson or an actual lesson out of a course, uh, you can reshape the material. Um, it's created by industry leaders. So you'll see in the library that it's fueled by a mix of different agencies, uh, consultancies and brands. Uh, Pernod Ricard is one that we, we love to mention, obviously a very large drinks company globally. They produce some fantastic courseware for, for uh, various programs in the library. And in addition to that, a lot of the material is coming from our internal learning team uh, that is fueled by uh, resources from governmental uh, sites. So anything that you see that's produced by the EDAP team will always have sources in it. And, uh, and you'll see that it, uh, those sources are obviously uh, from very credible government sources, which is um, super important that the material that you're deploying is, um, is up to date and up to scratch. Um, additionally there, you'll see that we have ready to deploy programs. So in the past, when we've talked about the library, we have said that it, 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 in, it was in its early stages and that maybe one course here and one course there could be um, helpful for your program. But we've gotten it to a stage right now that um, you can actually choose a selection of different material and literally have a, a curriculum ready to deploy uh, right away, which means that you could essentially sign up for EdUp today and deploy to your learners um, very, very quickly. So um, that's super exciting. And then finally, there it lives side by side with the uh, material that you would build uh, custom in the authoring tool that we have. Uh, and this gives you the ability to wire together some off the shelf material and combine it with your, um, with your own training that you build in the tool. Uh, and we can simulate that in a second. Uh, so what are the key areas for development for us? Uh, yes, in the library, you'll find a real mix of different courses uh, across any topic that you might imagine. But for us, we have uh, heard from many partners and we've decided that there is a, there is a set number of uh, topics uh, and industries that we, we would like to focus, focus on uh, for the rest of 2020. Uh, and those are, sorry, industries like hospitality and hotels, manufacturing, construction, retail and warehousing, uh, general compliance. Um, startups is a category where we're building out material for small to medium sized enterprises and trying to answer the training concerns that they may have. Uh, that, is, that is maybe potentially a little bit different from, from larger business. And then finally their campaignable courseware is a selection of courseware that is focused on trending topics. Obviously right now diversity and inclusion is something that all organizations should be across. Uh, so campaignable courseware really speaks to that. We want to arm HR teams with the ability to deploy really relevant, really topical material to speak to their staff and um, obviously communicate the issues of the day and communicate co company policies. Um, so that material we can talk about in deeper, uh, in depth in a second. So let's get into the content itself. The way that we're going to split up today is to talk about recent favorites. So courseware that's been deployed in the past that is really being enjoyed by partners. Uh, so that should hopefully give everyone a bit of visibility as to what you can get from the library today. Secondly, there we're going to talk about what's coming up next week. Um, just to show you that there is new material coming in all the time and it, uh, it is super relevant. Thirdly there, what can we expect uh, in the rest of 2020? And then fourth, uh, Chris is gonna put together an awesome demo for us at the end to show you how, you how you take that existing material and drop it in your account and, and get going with some branding. Um, Chris, in terms of the comments, um, obviously if we can 
take those comments and, and have them fuel the demo. Uh, I think you had an idea about how we could um, spice up the demo with content that uh, comes through on the chat. Yeah, absolutely. I'm taking a look and we do have some pretty good questions in here, um, but most of them look like we should be able to cover off during the live demo. Okay, excellent. Well, that being said though, if, if any come in uh, pertaining to the content library, I'll be sure to derail you as elegantly as possible. <laughs> Feel free. Hello, everybody. Okay, so let's have a look at recent content favorites. So we have seen a, a huge wave of interest in some recent compliance courses that have been added. Uh, and as I said earlier, material in the library comes from quite a few sources. Uh, and these three courses here, discrimination, bullying, and sexual harassment came from an agency uh, in Australia uh, called the Bamboo Tree. Um, and this courseware has been very much enjoyed by many partners. Obviously, these sorts of topics are relevant um, irrespective of the industry that you're in. Um, so these three courses are in the library right now and available to be dropped into any of your accounts and rebranded. The second main co uh, feature course that we wanted to point out was a food prep course that actually was released two weeks ago. Uh, this particular course is suitable for anyone in hospitality, uh, and it really covers the topics around food preparation and food compliance um, that is important to anyone uh, in a restaurant or, or food setting. As you can see there on screen, uh, and what we always love to reiterate is that EdApps training is very uh, interactive and visual. Uh, these, are, these are not training courses that are kind of governmental sources that is pages and pages of text. Obviously we're leveraging EdApp's great ability to gamify and, and add in rich media to training. Uh, and as such, you will get that from this food prep course. So if there's anyone in hospitality on the webinar, this course is, could be worth, definitely worth checking out. <clears throat> Talking about some other favorites, uh, so we've got lots of other courses to mention, uh, whether it be in construction and manufacturing, uh, in ladder safety or fire safety. Uh, these are, there are quite a few more than this, but um, these are some of the favorites that have been downloaded and, and used the most. Uh, the one there on defensive driving for heavy vehicles is one that I've seen um, really make quite a splash. Um, obviously, uh, defensive driving and, and heavy vehicle operation is central to quite a few different industries, whether you're you know, in the mining sector or whether you uh, manage a construction company, uh, heavy vehicles are obviously part of the day-to-day -day work of many organizations. So that course, again, if I can reiterate here, uh, many of our partners have taken that course uh, and then added and subtracted elements to make it fit for their specific industry. And again, the, the USP of our library is that it's not, these aren't courses that are off the shelf and that you have to stick with. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, it would be fantastic if library material was perfect from, from the get-go and you could just deliver it straight out to your audience. And for many of these courses, you could do that. However, we think that there's such a great opportunity to add to them and reshape them for your audience to really speak in your own language. So some other favorites here, general compliance category. We have a new OSHA course that came in last week. We also have another course that is uh, specific to drugs and alcohol in the workplace. Um, the material actually for drugs and alcohol actually covers uh, sources across uh, Australia the USA and the UK. <clears throat> so that course will be relevant, obviously, in those in all markets, but specifically ta tailored for those three markets. On the hospitality front, some more uh, content here around food poisoning and food contamination uh, that, again, would be great for anyone in that sort of restaurant setting. So what's coming up next week? Things to get excited about. Uh, this course here on payment types and security has been one that many of our retail partners have asked for. The whole idea with this course is to allow you to educate your retail associates uh, on 
the most relevant and uh, up-to-date payment types uh, and how to handle those, how to, how to greet customers and um, facilitate those payments. And also the, mo the most important things to bear in mind from a security standpoint when you're handling customers' credit information. Uh, so that one is coming next week and uh, I expect that it may zip to the top, the top of the list in terms of popularity. What else is coming? So on the manufacturing front, you can see here that we've got lots of uh, courses that are specific to uh, safety around uh, the job site, uh, whether that's uh, hazardous materials or asbestos safety, heavy metals hazards uh, as well. On the hospitality front, we've got kitchen operations, food safety risk factors, and restaurant management. Um, that restaurant management one, again, has been a, another one that's been quite um, heavily requested. Okay, so what's going to be available before the end of 2020? Um, so what we've tried to do is compile a list of courses that has uh, that will be being worked on. Uh, and this list of courses has come from a group of uh, customers and uh, prospective clients of our platform to tell us what they would like to see so that we can shape uh, the library accordingly. Um, obviously, we're not the experts on all of these topics. We, we really rely on government sources, uh, our partner contributors, uh, and our clients to tell us what they need. So subsequently, we've put together this list for hospitality and hotels as our kind of hit list for things to look at before the end of the year. Uh, so in hospitality and hotels, again, those kind of themes that we've been talking about, whether that be food safety or, or uh, customer service, um, those sorts of things are top of the list. On the manufacturing front, we've got um, quite a few different topics here. Uh, again, big focus on safety. Uh, that forklift operation uh, courseware at the bottom of the list there is actually an interesting one. We do have an existing course on forklift operation in the library, but um, <clears throat> it has been very popular and subsequently we've had uh, more interest for, for a deeper kind of dive into the topic. So subsequently that has, has made the list as well in terms of a, a forklift 2.0 course. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, in terms of construction, uh, we've got many different topics, whether that be uh, again, safety, uh, as well as kind of procedures around um, different actions on the job site, whether you're excavating or you're welding. Uh, these tend to be the things that are the most popular and the most common between uh, many organizations that we deal with uh, that are in a construction setting. Um, but again, feel free to let us know in the chat if you, uh, if you would like us to add to this list. On the retail side of things, we're looking at courseware for not only the, the staff that are on the retail floor, but also those that are working in the warehouse and um, and facilitating things like picking and storing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, have a look, we'll stay on this slide just for a second. I know there's a lot of information here, um, but we would love to hear your feedback on, um, on what you would like to see. Uh, Chris, in terms of retail suggestions, is there anything in the chat worth, um, worth bringing up? Well, we haven't had anyone come into the chat asking about any specific content uh, to be previewed. Okay, great, great. General compliance, you can see here that um, really covering off the essentials when it comes to compliance, uh, both for kind of uh, the office setting employment uh, employees uh, and those out in the field as well. Um, so right now at the top of this list, you, you'll see uh, discrimination, sexual harassment, um, and a few others that are already in our library. Uh, so for the rest of 2020, we'll be kind of going further there and looking at things like social, social media security, cyber security, uh, whistleblower awareness, um, lots of different topics, as you can see there. <clears throat> 
In terms of startups, this is this is a really fun one and, and something that is really being champion, championed by our learning team. And it, it's really come out of the fact that we've heard from many small organizations that want to deploy courseware that will allow them to deal with the day-to-day of running a, a startup. Um, and those things are really relevant topics, whether it be remote working uh, is one that is, is obviously super relevant at the moment, uh, how to kind of deal with staff and, and how to set in those policies and expectations when it comes, for, comes to working from home. Um, but also other topics like um, helping uh, employees graduate into leadership roles. Uh, so this particular category of topics is all about arming uh, HR managers for small businesses with the tools that they need to talk to their audience and um, and run a run a small business. <clears throat> and then finally, looking at campaignable courseware. So what this means is uh, courseware that you can deploy that will speak to the issues of the day. Uh, Those of you that are on our newsletter may have seen uh, just last week or the week before uh, the release of some new courseware around optimism for wellness month. Obviously, October is wellness month. Um, In addition to that, we have a calendar of uh, topics that we will be focusing on throughout the rest of 2020 and and to come, um, really to speak to really what's important in business uh, during those months, whether that be Earth Day in April or International Women's Day in February. Um, And again, our hope with this material is that it will give you uh, the ability, if you like, to just deploy it out to your audience without really any revision or amendments. However, if you wanted to take that courseware on International Women's Day and equality, for example, you could take that courseware and then apply your own custom material to it. You could talk about, you know, the actions that you guys are currently taking in the workplace um, for gender equality, or you could talk about great things that you're doing uh, outside of the business as well. Uh, So again, I can't stress that enough that EDAP really gives you that ability to take all of this off the shelf material and really make it your own for your audience. Okay, so that covers my component of the presentation. I'm going to hand over to Chris, who's going to take us through a demo on how we take some of that existing material and wire together a program that is going to be meaningful. And potentially, if it does satisfy the brief, uh, could be deployed as as early as, uh, you know, within a day. Um, So Chris, if I can hand over to you and jump into that. All right, perfect. And uh, let me know when you can see my screen all right. Yep, got you. Perfect. All right, all right so let's get started. Um, what we're looking at here, for those of you who aren't already familiar with it, is EdApp's admin tool. Uh, and this is the screen that you're greeted with upon signing up for a brand new account for the first time. Um, so our goal today is to grab a series of courses from the content library to satisfy some training uh, or some training requirements coming down from our from a hypothetical team today we'll be posing as uh, Adidas, the sneaker company, and we're, we're going to be looking at, at taking some safety training and some compliance material uh, and pushing it out to our learners, uh, our wide audience. So let's go ahead and open up the content library and take a look. And before I get this kicked off, I just want to speak to a few of the questions that you guys have had in the chat. So first things first, updates. How do we make sure that this material is up to date and where do we go, uh, where do we go to see new courseware material that's been added? Uh, whenever courseware material has been added to your account, you can check to see if that's been updated by pressing this button. And you'll see a little red badge, uh, very similar to the badge that you would find um, on an email or a text application if you've got a notification waiting there for you, right? Um, coming on down the uh, content library, we had a question about how is this organized? And you'll see at the top, our content library is delineated by genre. So our first genre present here is safety, quality, and risk management. Uh, A lot of the material in here you could see would be used in more industrial verticals, um, such as construction for forklift operation safety, um, or evacuation and safety in the workplace, which can be used fairly widely, or even electrical safety for more engineering. 
heading on back, if we scroll down, we'll see that the next category could be for wellness, which can be used across a wide variety of industries. We have our newly added category for uh, all of the new material as it comes in, uh, in the form of a timeline. Some material from UNITAR, the United Nations, modern business management, a variety of different categories. Um, now, seeing this material from UNITAR actually brings up something interesting uh, from another question that we had in the audience, which is the business model or commercial agreement behind the authors who contribute this material, where they're coming from and, and who's making this. And uh, Luke, I'd love to actually pass this one back to you if you wouldn't mind elaborating on who goes about uh, building this material? Uh, is it us? Is it uh, our wider authoring community? And how does it get here? Absolutely. So if you can just scroll up to me to uh, one of the sponsored posts there, um, the Unitar one will, will satisfy. Uh, hmm. Sorry, go up a little bit further for me. Let's find- I can find the Marley Spoon and, uh, and uh, Print Over Card or MCI Solutions courses. Yep, excellent. Um, so you can see here that the content contributor, whether it's a sponsored post like this one or others that are in white, uh, the contributor is clearly identified there. And you can see uh, the author, you can see a write-up, you can also see links to that specific uh, contributor. Uh, Improvement Sciences, in this case, is a, is an, a learning agency in the USA. Um, so the commercial or the uh, arrangement between contributing content is that partners can deliver content in our library um, and be featured as you can see and promote their businesses whether you're a thought leader in a certain industry or whether you're actually a consultancy uh, that material is added to the library and as we've been saying it's available for free uh, by the audience that use our platform we have seen many businesses like Improvement Sciences use the content library as a vehicle for promoting their services uh, as an agency. Um, for example, um, there is an ability outside of the library itself to commercialize and monetize the sale of courseware through our API. Uh, and that can be done through a, an e-commerce store living outside of this experience. Uh, it, additionally, many of the larger consultancies in here obviously deliver their own proprietary programs uh, and using EdApp as a vehicle. Uh, so essentially that's the makeup of the arrangement whereby organizations are contributing content, um, which is then av made available for free to our audience. So there's no money changing hands with regard to the content. Um, however, obviously, as you can see here, it is an ability to gain some significant exposure for your organization and, and to become a thought leader and drive uh, subsequent business out of that. Awesome. Thanks for chiming in there, Luke. No um, so let's carry on ahead with the demo. And what I've done here is I've selected a few courses. We're going to come through and select a few more that would be indicative of just some baseline compliance, safety training, uh, and general learning requirements of a company. So I've selected a few from our, from our library and we're gonna come down and take a look at a few more. Uh, I think there was one in here recently, that's been added recently, sorry, um, that's more relevant than ever. <laughs> that's sitting and standing. I know this, this has been a huge problem for me personally working from home. I've uh, got a little too comfortable. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and add the sitting and standing <laughs> course to make sure that uh, <laughs> the work from home strain isn't too great on our teams. Perfect. Um, we've already selected, let's try drugs and alcohol in the workplace. Luke, you spoke to this uh, earlier, so we're gonna go ahead and add this material to, the, to our library of courses, our personal account actually, uh, and we can take a look at it. Awesome, we've got some training on COVID added already. Let's try something for home. Um, so I wanted to add this domestic violence awareness course. Uh, we had someone ask in the comment section about any country specific considerations for material and how you'd go about finding that out. So this domestic violence awareness course has been tagged as Australia only because it's specific to the Australian market and the material that is, is, is catered to that audience. 
Uh, and this is how you'd go about finding out. And let's in try. Of, in terms of a browsing and search functionality, uh, right now you can obviously search for material. Uh, and in terms of a browsing operation, you can see that the material on this scrollable list is categorized by different, uh, different topics uh, and, and um, ob objectives. So at the moment, these are the two facilities you have for finding relevant courseware. And with the search function, you will then give, have the ability to filter by uh, country. Um, we are working on some features in the future to make this a little bit more concise in terms of being able to see content specific to the USA only, for example. Uh, so that's currently in the mix and um, actually we'll have a release on that uh, either next week or the following week where you'll have a, a really express tool to be able to find relevant courseware and, and know what's in the library because obviously we understand that there is quite a a depth of material there to get through. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, Luke. So with these nine courses selected, we're just gonna press this import button. Um, and in a moment here, the courses should be added to our account. Awesome, here we are and looking good. Um, so what, uh, again, just, just to reiterate, the idea here is that we've been given a, a, a variety of topics um, that we've been tasked to provide to our learning audience. Uh, and here are the topics that we've chosen, some uh, workplace compliance training uh, for a more office setting, some COVID-19 preparedness, uh, and some safety, uh, some safety training materials such as fire safety or evacuation plans. Um, and it's all here. As a matter of fact, uh, the material is finished material. It could be out of the box deployed to your team. Um, but with edF's authoring tool, you would definitely benefit I'm coming in here and making some amendments or some changes. At the very least, of course, applying your team's branding is, is, is a great start. So I'm gonna go ahead and just upload really quickly an Adidas logo. Again, we're masquerading as uh, the Adidas company. And let's, let's get our branding in here. I've done this by opening up, the, opening up the lesson, heading over to the branding tab and uploading a logo. Now you see there's a couple of other fields here. We're not gonna to have to worry about these too much since this course was pre-built. So for example, it's already got a background uploaded, um, which should look great. It's already got a thumbnail and a cover image that are relevant. So all we need to do is apply our own personal touch in the form of a logo and we should be ready to go. Now, the reason I bring up the evacuation plan first is one of the lessons within this evacuation plan course is roots and floor plans. Now we're not gonna open this up and take a look at the authoring tool today. That's for a different demo. Um, but I highly recommend what you would do is just edit this content and any images or graphics of your own facility floor plans, um, they, would, they would find their home in here. So how are we doing on questions, Luke? Do we have anyone chiming in just yet? So far, so good. Okay, perfect. So we've got our branding uploaded um, and we've made any amendments that we need, uh, any specific amendments that we need, for example, uploading floor plans in the form of imagery. Let's go ahead and do the same for a different course, say uh, sitting and standing. Awesome, so we've got our two lessons here, the dangers of sitting and measuring sedentary work. And we're gonna do the same thing. We've already got a great thumbnail, already have a relevant cover image, the background is looking good. All we need to do is just upload our team's logo. And that is done. Um, perfect. Sorry, so jump in here, Chris. We've, we've had a, a nice question about customizing CSS. Um, and and uh, the question just relates to getting a resource to be able to uh, understand how to customize that CSS and which elements to control. Uh, the guys have just posted a link uh, in the chat to be able to uh, help everyone find a, a handy guide on how to navigate through CSS. So um, that is in the chat. Uh, and um, hopefully if you have the same question that will answer your, uh, your requirements. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd love to just elaborate a little bit on CSS. Um, CSS is more in depth or more involved than these really simple branding tools, which just consist of uploading imagery. Um, CSS is an advanced option for users who want even more customization. 
Um, and without having to give you an entire course on coding, um, a great way to put this really succinctly is to just look at these elements here, the font, the progress bar, the OK, I'm done button, a top right rectangle. These are all elements in the user interface of our mobile app and our desktop application that you can actually, if you'd like to, modify uh, by changing the color, the background color, um, the size of the border elements. So all of these things can be changed. The reason you'd want to do that is to match your company's branding. So um, we would we would put it to you, we would phrase it to you like this: Just head to your team's website, take a look at the elements on that website, and the way that those buttons are structured, the way that the font is set up, colored, what font it is, um, and match that here in the CSS so that your employees will feel an immediate connection to the material as it comes across. This is something that's really easy to do, even though it looks complicated, and uh, and I think that you'd benefit from some more advanced branding here. Or if you like me, guys, just go and ask the the IT department for some help there, and I'm sure they'll they'll be able to give you some insights. Yeah. Or if you're like me, just upload a logo and call it a day. <laughs> so um, there's CSS in a nutshell. Um, all right, great. So. Um, to bring everyone up to speed, what we've done here today is we've imported nine courses, we've added our branding to a few, um, and to give you an idea of the finished effect, what this looks like and, and how your users can interact with this, we're gonna go ahead and pan over and take a look at the mobile application here. And I'm gonna open up a few of these courses and poke around and, and, and show you how engaging um, and uh, the experience that we have. Sorry, how engaging the experience that we have is. So I'm opening up the app, and let's take a look at the courses that we've added. And they're all here, fire safety, evacuation plan, both of the compliance pieces that we've added, some material on COVID-19, sitting and standing. This is one we've just edited. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. We see a little new badge here. We'll give it a click. And here are our two courses. We can see uh, so far I'm at 0% progress, but not for long. I mean, this is micro learning after all, so it shouldn't take us too long to complete this material. Um, so let's take a look at measuring sedentary work uh, and let's fire it up. All right, great. So here is the introduction to the lesson. Our branding is present in the top left corner. You can see the user elements have already been modified using that CSS we just spoke about. And I'm gonna work my way through the content. So we'll hit continue. Right off the bat, instead of a static piece of text, we're greeted with some elements of, uh, sorry, some user elements that you can interact with by exposing specific pieces of text relevant to uh, topics such as exposure, pattern, and context. Here we have uh, a, a yet another different way to, to provide simple text in an engaging way, and that's swiping through a, a gallery of mixed media. Here we've got um, an interaction in the form of a question where uh, you have the ability to drag these little elements onto the sentence to complete it either accurately or inaccurately. And let's see how I've done here. Looks like I got it wrong and here's why. Yet another engagement, zoom in and, uh, and receive a little bit more context on any imagery that you choose. Uh, again, with some mixed media. And here we have a question. Your users have the ability to select what they think is the right answer and progress. So um, the idea here is that uh, what we're trying to showcase is how easy it is to have an engaging and branded piece of material delivered to your audience using EdApp's content library. Um, and with that, Luke, how are we looking for questions on the specific um, I have a question for you. Um, can you just hop out of that user experience for me just for a second and go back to the admin side of things? So okay. as I've been uh, sharing with everybody, really the core benefit that we love to talk about is taking this off, off the shelf material and making it your own. So just jump back into that sitting and standing course for me, Chris. Sure, um, and let's open up that lesson that we were just looking at, the measuring sedentary work lesson. Uh, let's edit. Perfect. So thus far, you showed us how to brand this courseware up and add that custom CSS. Could you just talk us through um, the makeup of the lesson itself 
And maybe add a, an additional interaction, either a game or a survey question to really tailor that to toward the Adidas company. Again. Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> and, and that's something that shouldn't be too hard. I mean, we just worked our way through this lesson. So on the right hand side of the screen, this template selector, all of this should look familiar to you. For example, you saw earlier, we had an image gallery um, followed by a missing word template wherein I dragged these little elements on screen into the correct or incorrect spot, hit continue. It was followed by a collection of images. Um, this is a, uh, yeah, this is, this template editor is, is um, one, a one for one recreation for what we saw on screen. And this is how we built it using the template selector, the text elements uh, and the image ele elements can be added in the center of the screen. And then we have a simulation of the user app on the left side of the screen. So Luke, if what we wanted to do was just add a, a quick little game, I open up the template selector and I work my way through the variety of different templates that EdUp has to author, offer, sorry. Um, and so you mentioned a game. Let's go ahead and add one. Uh, I'm going to head on down to the games category. And let's say uh, a letter jumble or a next in order uh, is, is, of, uh, is what we're looking for. So we're going to drop a next of order game in here at the end of the lesson. Perfect. Uh, and here's how this works. You've got a title and a description. Uh, and the goal of this game is to get the order of these images uh, correct. Um, so you have three images in here and the sequence in which that they should be displayed. You can add some imposters if you want, and you can set a time limit. So um, this would be relatively easy. We're going to go ahead and find some images. For example, we're posing as a, uh, Adidas. So let's go ahead and find some images of some sneakers or something like that. Oh, actually, I don't have Canvas set up. Um, I actually don't have any uh, images of sneakers set aside. Anyway, we can, um, if you can just show us the, the interaction of the game there on the left, Chris, I'm sure everyone can um, paint a picture in their own mind. Just click on that. Okay, I'm ready on the left there. Excellent. Perfect. So this is the actual game interaction that you would be populating with your content uh, as, as it appears on screen and playing the game. Uh, the interaction in the center there, as you can see, is the editor where you would customize it. Uh, if you can just show me a, a survey slide, I think that um, often this is, a, this is a, a really kind of nice value add to any sort of lesson being, being provided to an audience. Um, so you can see here, just Chris is populating a survey question. Uh, the learner interaction is that with this particular template, we're asking them for free text and they can tap on the, on the box there and contribute back to uh, your uh, central administration. Uh, and all of, the data, all of that data is captured in our analytics suite. So it's something, you know, when it comes to compliance based topics, a really good opportunity to talk to staff and get their feedback about um, how they feel on a particular topic. Perfect. Yeah. Um, another really great template besides a game template would be a relationship or a multiple choice question. Wherein um, you're, for example, dragging to match different elements across the screen. Or uh, a variety of different multiple choice style questions. We saw a few of them in the lesson, specifically this chat one. Um, but you can pose these a, a bunch of different ways. If your goal was simply to keep your audience on their toes, add a circle multiple choice question. Functionally, it's the same, but the interaction is a little bit different and it keeps things exciting. Awesome. How did we do there, Luke? Yeah, really well. We have a, a question here from Karen. Hi, Karen. Um, how to create courseware using apps that engages, uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Engages a group of learners simultaneously instead of self-paced experience. Uh, so we do see that our platform used in, in uh, conference and, and kind of face-to-face -face settings quite frequently. Um, obviously, each individual learner will log into the experience and, and have their own credentials, uh, but you can direct them to complete, the mater complete specific material uh, during uh, a, a seminar, for example. Uh, and we do have various features to be able to lock uh, and um, limit access to certain material outside of specific dates. Um, so that is a great way to, 
basically uh, schedule material uh, that will be accessed during a, a specific event. Um, in addition to that, we've got a, quite a few features like discussions and virtual assignments uh, and virtual classrooms, sorry, that allow learners to participate together and um, have a shared experience. A discussion in, in EdApp is really a, a small forum allowing learners to be able to answer a specific topic, uh, comment on their peers' posts, follow a thread, um, and, um, and really share in that kind of peer-to-peer -peer experience. A virtual classroom, on the other hand, is your, gives you the ability to set up a uh, live event uh, in the platform uh, where you can specify a date and a time and then populate either with a web link, whether that be a Zoom conference link like the one that we're on, uh, or it could be uh, just some written text to, to convey uh, the, the actual physical location of a face-to-face -face, uh, training session. So there are a couple of features that allow you to take that kind of self-paced kind of approach to, to learning and, and really, really leverage EdApp in that kind of classroom setting. Um, if you have any more questions about that, Karen, feel free to, to reach out. We'd love to, to answer and showcase those features in greater detail. For anyone else, we can, you can also have a look at our uh, webinars page on YouTube and, um, and you'll see uh, previous we webinars on those particular topics. Um, I might wrap things up now. I think we've taken up enough of everyone's time. If I can just take over the screen there, Chris. All yours. Excellent. All right, so that brings us to the end of the webinar. Um, thank you to everyone for joining us and um, we've certainly had a great time. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, if you're in the USA, feel free to shoot me an email at luke at edapp.com. Uh, if you're in the UK, uh, feel free to reach out to Jamie and um, we can provide a personalized demo, provide a bit more detail. Uh, about the features that we discussed today in the upcoming courseware. Uh, and, and then circling back again, obviously, we would love to hear from you in terms of your requirements with regard to courseware. Uh, and we can talk about when that can be avail made available in the future. Um, let me just have a quick look to see if there were any final questions. Um, Excellent. Thank you for thank you for the nice comments there, guys. Um, Chris, thanks for joining me, mate. Um, enjoy the rest of your day in New York, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Luke. Perfect. Bye, guys. See you.